All right, the podcast this week, it's just the boys. Just the boys, baby. Just the boys. We're back in the locker room, baby. <laughs> Emily Austin just oh, gallivanting. No. All over. All around the world. Oh. We don't know where she is right now. We don't who know knows? when she'll be back. Who knows? Uh, there's rumors who knows? she could be back. I'm not going to say who cares because we love her. Well, right. right? right. We there's love rumors Emily. she could be back later this week. We don't know <laughs> what that means. If that means just on in the continental U.S. Yeah. or back to work, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll find out. But, but she is not here today. So Joe Yock and I are going to have to carry We do it love you, Emily. Yeah. You're, we you're love special. you, Emily. You're special, you're special. And people love you. And I hope you're having a great time. And we really look forward to having you back. Yes. We really do. Yes. She is in a warmer climate Don't wink right over it. Don't wink that. at me no, when I, I no, said that. No. I, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> I, that, was totally, that was totally authentic. I feel like, Joe, I need to apologize to you. Uh-oh. I, I don't know if I'm going to be on top of my game today. I am a, I'm a little tired. Oh, uh, from last I don't night. know if yeah. you're aware of the football game that went down yeah. last night. I was uh, cheering for you, buddy. The, you know, just a thriller, Chiefs. Because you're my Bengals. pal. That's I why I was cheering that. for you. Uh, didn't sleep well last night. You finished something like that. I'm just all amped up. Yeah, you're just you're just laying there in bed, just scrolling through Twitter. I'm surprised you didn't give me. A, I think you sent me. Oh yeah, you did send me one thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not Burrowhead. It, no, it's not Burrowhead. It's, it's not, not it's, it's Arrowhead. It's, it's not Burrowhead. It's not Burrowhead. But, uh, but that was a fun one, wild finish to that ball. Was that game. a mistake for him to say that? Uh, yes. Did they use that as a lot of motivation? Yes, I think. I, I mean, think the fans so. are the, oh, really yeah. the ones that got, oh, yeah. that got them juiced up. I, I still believe yeah. the best course any athlete can take in a big game like that yeah. is just high road. say nothing. Yeah. Just say nothing. Yeah. Don't give any, don't stoke <laughs> that the fire at all. And that that game happened. was crazy. Yeah, so many twists and turns. I mean, I really thought the like when the Chiefs started the receivers and the, they were yeah. had guys banged up. Yeah. And Kelsey had the back. I mean, yeah. they, you gave the ball back to the Bengals with like two minutes. You left. gave it back to two I'm minutes like, left. It. It's this over. is this is trouble. And yeah. then when that Yahoo pushed him, I mean, that was a penalty. Was a you penalty. Got, you have to, hit on you're, the You're going to call that Absolutely. penalty 100. I don't care what the situation is. Absolutely. The guy, Mahomes was two steps out of bounds. He's yeah. pushing the back. You're in a very dangerous situation for everybody. And when it's a quarterback, absolutely. And it's a guy who's making $250 million a year. Yeah. You know, yeah, guess what? Yeah. You're, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that, congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Chiefs, Eagles, Chiefs, Super Bowl. Eagles. We have that to look forward to. I'm going to tell you what. Uh, did you see the Rocky thing I sent you? No, when you Yeah, I sent that this morning. Oh, I'll Yeah, Rocky. Uh, is this one of your Instagram reels? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I sent you I an Instagram yeah. reel. All right. I sent you a few, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Good. I've got some <laughs> making up to do. I'll, yeah, I'll go, yeah, scroll I'll go check. check yeah, but yeah, it's Sylvester Stallone going to the Rocky statue. You got problems. Yeah. yeah Did you, you see someone had put a, a 49ers t shirt on the Rocky statue? No, they before didn't. the game? Yeah, no, that's how they that didn't. worked out. Yeah. You do not. There's a lot of things you don't do. You do not deface the Rocky statue. That's going to. That's crossing the line. That's crossing the line. Yeah. All right. You got you're gonna have some problems though. That Philadelphia yeah. team is legit. Yeah. Have I ever told you my Rocky statue story? <laughs> no. Really tell quick. It. Apparently, tell this is what goes on at the Rocky statue. I've been to the Rocky statue. Have you? Yeah. Well, you may have seen this guy then. There's some guys that kind of hang around the Rocky statue. Yeah. And so, and I read about this after the fact, people confirm this. And so when people go up and they're like trying to take pictures, they'll come up and say, Oh, hey, do you want me to take your picture for you? Yeah. And they'll say, Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. And then they shake you down for all your cash. Yeah, and I saw you this down. happen. Yeah. This woman's like, oh, thank you. So great. He takes a picture, and then he's holding her phone, and he's like, yeah, I'm going to need to get some money out of you. And she's like, oh, oh. And she pulls out cash and gives him a bill, and he's like, uh-uh. I need, I need a lot more of that. To and basically the- shook her down. Got, I don't know how much cash from no her way. to give her phone back. So beware if you go to the Rocky statue. Did you get – you saw a shakedown? Saw it happen. Saw it happen. Did nobody try to shake down you? That now they Shol- shoulders Come like on. that. Are you kidding me? Get out of, get out of Are you here. kidding yeah. me? Come on. Oh, physique He's like that. Are you kidding me? That. Yeah. No, nobody's okay. that dumb. All right, let's talk a little. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk a little. You liberty changed hoop. the subject yeah. really yeah. quick. Right let's there. talk a little Liberty basketball. Let's go, baby. Liberty picks up a couple of wins over the weekend. They beat Setson. They beat FGCU. Flames now eighteen to five, nine and one in A Sun play. Here's a couple of numbers for you, Joe. Give them to me. In Liberty's nine A Sun wins. They've all been by double digits. Yeah. And their average margin of victory in those nine wins, yeah. 21 points. Ouch. Dominant. That's totally legit. Dominant. Uh, and, and we're starting to see now where teams are just throwing all kinds of just junk at the Flames. Yeah. Like uh, Stetson, they just like face guarded Darius McGee yeah. everywhere, yeah, wherever yeah, he went. Yeah, that doesn't work. Then you saw FGCU. They were, he'd catch it. They'd run two guys at him. Yeah. And try to get the ball see, out of his That's dog and pony show right. stuff. Right. Actually, that's it. That's, that's. Did you use Richie that McKay, line? we talked to that's him at the half. dog and pony show stuff. And he's like, gimmick D, this gimmick defense. Yeah, like He was yeah. ticked. He was ticked. Desperation. But you know what? When you have other guys that are stepping up. Yeah. Sure, go ahead. 
Try yeah. that. You run two guys to Darius McGee because yeah. they're going to find somebody yeah. else that's open. Ooh. And that's, that's exactly a great what they sign did. for Liberty basketball. Right. It is. Right? Like when you start doing this gimmicky dog and pony yeah. show stuff, they just tell me we, we have no idea how we're going to guard you. Yeah. So, at Liberty, here's yeah. a stat I love. And this is something Naz and I have talked about a little bit. There's a, an analytics site. Your son, who's a coach, probably knows yes. it. It's EvanMaya.com. He's the analytics guy, right? And he has a stat that I love called kill shots. Kill shots. And all that is is a 10 0 run. 10-0 oh, yeah, run yeah, or yeah, more, gotcha. right? Kill shots. Liberty is number one in the nation in kill. kill shots per game. That's amazing. That is amazing. But you know what that makes it amazing is because they guarantee you, if you were to ask the coaching staff, what does that come down to? Great oh. defense. Yeah. It's, it starts right. it's with not, great. You think it, of it on think, the oh, offensive we score, side. we score, we score, we score. No. You got to string together it, stops. It, you string together stops yeah. with great defense, and then you score in transition, and bada bang, bada boom, all of a sudden you lead the nation in kill shots. Yeah. All right, here's one other stat that I, I have for you here. You know how I like my stats. So Richie McKay, nine games ago, shuffled up the lineup. Yeah. Moved big man Blake Preston, who we're yeah. supposed to have on the show today. Yeah. Felt okay. the last minute. We're going to okay, get him back. Blake. We'll get you back. Moved him in the starting lineup. You know, I even brought him a Yacht Talk coffee. Did you mind. really? I did. Oh, boy. That's a shame. We'll, we'll, get, right. we'll, we'll get, get it to you, Blake. Don't That's going to hurt yeah. him. Things happen. That. Right. Things happen. Right. 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 We're flexible. Yeah. Blake goes in the starting lineup nine games ago. Shiloh Robinson moves to the bench. Both have been just unlocked in that time period. And now in a sun play, Shiloh Robinson and Blake Preston rate number one and number two in all of the A-Sun in field goal percentage. Get out of here. Robinson shooting 74% from the field in conference play. Preston 66. So you talk about, oh, Darius McGee. And that's, you know, obviously he gets so much attention and well yeah. deserved. But you're seeing now those two guys that have really taken off. And, and they've been that much it's better. Good coaching right there. It is. Shuffle it is. a little line, a lineup shuffle, yeah. and, you, and you get the best out of your guys. I love it. A couple other things it. to keep track of as we move forward. Darius McGee now 27 points away from being Liberty's all-time leading scorer. Really? So the Flames at Austin P. on Thursday. That's we had it. hoped that he would kind of pick it up a little bit so we'd have a chance to get it that at home. Yeah. It uh, doesn't look like that'll happen. They're on the road these next two, so he'll probably get it on the road. And that's in uh, Carl Hess. Carl Hess is who he will yes, pass. Yes, yeah. Carl yeah. Hess. Yeah. Carl Hess, basketball referee, Carl yep, Hess. That's right. Yep. So he has a chance to do Carl that. Hess, right. Carl Hess refereed national championships. Oh, yeah, he, yeah, he was He's doing big time. big time stuff. His son, Zach Hess, is a major league pitcher. Is that right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I did know. Yeah. Did he go to LSU? Yeah, he yeah. pitched, play, pitched yeah. at LSU, and I think he's with the – I'm not – who is he with right now? I don't know. Detroit, we'll maybe? It. Yeah. yeah. We go you know the, one of the crazy things, the though? Machine. Every you know, every basketball game, we get, like, uh, the little referee sheet, right? Who's ref in the game? Yeah. And Naz is always like, oh, yeah, that guy's dad was a referee for, like, 30 years. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. like a family business. It's a family it business. It really is. Yeah. Like, right, you know, yeah. you get into it, and you, your sons get into it. Do you know who Zach Hess is uh, <laughs> like how we're his, going pi off. is the pitcher? Nah, uh, you know who Zach has, has his little league uh, baseball coach was? Don't tell me it was you. Joe Yock. You you know, your Joe Yock. Not it's not your I coaching produce, tree, but I like your athletes. I know you do. You do produce uh, athletes. You're right. Uh, big time players. Uh Tigers. He's with yes, Detroit. Tigers. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I thought so. All right. Yeah. Uh, three point four two ERA last year. And yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah. solid. All right. That's good. We covered that. We want to hit <laughs> touch touch on minor league baseball. Let's go to a topic that has been uh, talked about a lot on social media. with Liberty Yeah, let's basketball. go with this. Let's do this. And a question that has been brought up, or not even a question, a statement, that some people have made that you would say, these aren't just your average Joe, Joe Blow out there. These are people that are involved in the program, have been yeah, around it for a long time. They're watching it close. And the statement has been made that this Liberty basketball team is the best Liberty team ever. Ever. I mentioned the numbers, how dominant they've been. Yeah. Can you make that statement in the middle of a season? Where do you come down on, like, making a statement like that before a season has even played itself out? You can't do it. You can't do it. I mean, you, I, you, I can, agree. You, can, you, can, you can pose the question, yeah. is this potentially the best team That's, ever? Yeah. Right? You can pose that question. Like, when you look at the pieces of the puzzle of the team and you look at how good Darius McGee is and now you start looking – at how good all the other pieces are starting to form yeah. around him as a team, like it begs you to ask the question. But the, those, those questions are never answered until conference tournament, yeah. NCAA tournament. Right. Well, and that, and you think, you think about Caleb Holmes would have something to say about right. This? You think about who who are the contenders, right, for that yeah. for that title? Yeah. 2018-19 team. They were 29 and seven. They beat Mississippi State in the NCAA tournament. Gave Virginia Tech gave Virginia all Tech they wanted. Fits. Yeah. We're that close to an in, to a Sweet 16 berth. Like, okay, they did it, right? They yeah. they did it 
over the course of a full season. And then the next year, they came back and went 30-4, and four, won the conference tournament. Yeah. The great, in my mind, the great what if, maybe, yeah. in Liberty Athletics. So many like, what ifs. COVID canceled the tournament. Yeah. Who knows what COVID they would have done. COVID. That might have been a Sweet 16 team. They yeah. certainly would have had the opportunity. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with that, you. Like, that Caleb Holmesley team that beat Mississippi not. State yeah. and took Virginia Tech to the wire, yeah. right, was right now, I don't think you can make an argument against that until the season's complete. Yeah. And when it's over and Darius McGee does what Darius McGee does, it's potentially, yeah. it could potentially happen. And you know what? It'd be interesting, and, and I, we're actually going to ask Blake this, it, because he was a retro on that team. So he on that team and he was there, you know, he, oh, he wasn't playing, but he was that. a retro on that team. But even guys within the program now, Myle Baxter Bell, uh, Elijah Cuffey, I'd be interested to get their take. Yeah, they I'm give sure a good take. since they played on those teams, they would lean towards those those teams. But they are as involved and as close to it as anybody. Uh, it'd be interesting to see their take and, and what how how they would think they would match up. Can you imagine right now that a Liberty 17 year old could say I was on the best team ever? Yeah. I mean that's potential right yeah. there. I mean, it's uh, that it is it is it is a really really good basketball team, yeah. and uh, so we'll, we'll definitely see how this plays. They can Darius McGee carry this team on his little shoulders. They may be little, but they're broad. Yeah, those okay. little those little but yet <laughs> yes. broad. You know what? Yeah. A lot like you, Matt Warner, but we're not going to go back, back there yet. Yeah. So I yeah. don't want to do this good. again. Thank to you. you. Yeah. But can he carry this team on his shoulders yeah. Yeah. in order to make to have that statement be fact by the end of the season? And does he have to? And does he As have you've to? you've seen some that's guys step big, up here recently, yeah, maybe he doesn't have big, to, which would probably part. be best for everybody involved. Yeah. All right, let's turn the page a little bit and talk some football. We'll get back to hoops in just a minute. Uh, Demario Douglas. Yes. In the Shrine Bowl. It's on Thursday night. You know, people think about just, just the game itself, but I feel like especially, and you tell me if I'm wrong, at the receiver position, yeah. the week leading up oh. to it is more important than the game itself because you might yeah. get yeah. two or three balls yeah. thrown your way, a lot of factors yeah. involved in the game, but you have all week in, in drills, interviews, all of that to really showcase yourself and a lot of buzz on social media about how good he's looked thus far. Yeah, so there's, you're 100% right on that, 100% right, because here's the deal, is that when you play at the receiver position, the DB position, and yeah. you're talking about the NFL, right? You're going to make it in the NFL if you are able to do two things, either side of the ball. Defensive backs have to be able to cover man to man, mm -hmm. right? That yeah. it's such a you don't have a chance. Yeah. If you can't cover man, yeah. you can be a great tackle corner, a great tackle safety. You can be great in zone and no angles, no positioning. But if you can't cover man, you're not playing in the NFL. Yeah. Right. And on the other side of the football, if you can't beat man, you're not playing in the NFL. So what you're saying right there is yes, that whole week of practice is going to be a lot of man to man drills, a lot of one on ones, and how teams do, I mean, how individual players do. Uh, during those drills is going to is going to weigh heavy, and the scuttlebutt. Tell me the scuttlebutt. What the are you hearing? Scuttlebutt. You're and plugged I've, in. And I've talked to sources who yeah. are actually at the Shrine Bowl yeah. right now. Yeah. Like they're on the phone with them. Boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. I got boots on the ground. Yeah. Right. I won't reveal my sources. That's fine. But That's I've fine. got boots on the ground. I talked to him. And said, and I talked to a guy who was skeptical. Okay. Of Demario Douglas. Okay. And the reason he was skeptical, he's been in the NFL for 25 plus years. Right. Like, like you just don't see a lot of like really smaller guys. Yeah. That like you see these kids in college that were, man, that was an amazing college receiver, but he's, you know, 5'10 or 5'9. He weighs 165 pounds. Sorry. Like, how many of them do you never hear from again? Right. Sure. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. You always got your your Edelmans and your Wes Walkers and you've Welker, got yeah. Welker, yes. Yeah. You got Wes, you got all these different guys. That are, they, they, there's a few of them. You're right? just naming all the small white receivers you can think of right now. Yeah, Danny right. Amendola. Danny Amendola. Uh, I mean, there's a few of them. Yeah. But you know what? You name a lot of what? You can name a lot more big ones. Right. Oh, yeah, right? no doubt. Yeah, and so so it's really hard to make it in the NFL uh, being smaller, but the, the 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 person that I talked to yeah. said his draft stock had improved. Like this dude can play. Yeah. Like he is quick. He can separate. He goes high points the ball. Um, he's super competitive. He's got all the traits that you need in order to make it in the NFL when you take the size out, yeah. out of it. So yes, his draft stock has has risen a lot throughout the week here in the Shrine Bowl. Well, I remember we talked to Hugh Freeze at one point during the season and asked, you know, what can you compare him to anyone that you've coached before? And I forget the comparison he made. Oh, I think it was uh, 
Oh, uh, receiver for the Rams. Uh, Van, Van Jefferson, yes, Van I think Jefferson. you compared him yeah. to him a little bit. Yeah. But he said that Douglas, the top of his route is more explosive than yes. anyone he had ever coached. Yeah. Explain what he meant by that. Yeah, yeah. So what you're really looking for is at separation. Yeah. Okay, so you have to, you're, you're going man-to-man against somebody, and then once you have to make, for example, a post corner, you work hard to the post and then back to the corner. That, that move back to the corner is yeah. the top of your route. Okay, so when you make that move, how good do you get out of those moves at the top of your out? Because that's where the separation is created. Yeah. And that's what Demario Douglas is, does really good. He gets on top of you quick, right? And then when he comes out of that last cut, that creates a separation. And that's the little bit of separation that is the difference in playing in the NFL. I know a lot of folks were like, man, why is he, why is he declaring for the NFL draft? And obviously, we would have loved to have had him back for another. Every Liberty yeah. fan would have loved to have had him back in the Flames uniform again this season. I'm sure Jamie Jadwell definitely would have signed up for that. But, like, ah, uh, was this a good decision? Yeah. Like, keep in mind, like, I kind of break down, like, what are, what are his options? And he was here four years. Yeah. Now, you think about, like, the COVID and all that stuff, so, like, that kind of skewed where he, you know, because yeah, he's yeah. like, oh, he's a sophomore. Well, he had the four-game redshirt yeah. COVID year. And so he was here four years. And you think about what were his options, what were on the table for him. As I see, there's three options. You come back to LU, you do it again, right? Yep. You'd be a dominant receiver like you've been the last two years. Yep. But how much does that really boost your draft stock? Right. Right? Doing what you – they people yeah. have already seen you do. Yeah. The other option is you listen to Aaron Murray and you transfer to a power five, which yeah. he was calling for in the Arkansas game. Yeah, well, you didn't like and that. I did not like that. Yeah. And what, what happens? How many times do you see guys transfer? Yeah. The fit isn't what they thought it would be. Right. Maybe they get buried on the depth chart. They never quite – never clicks. And then – you're just out of luck. Yeah, right. Then, then, then what? You know, then yeah. you're trying to make the move to the league after that, after you've yeah. been kind of forgotten about for a right. year. Or you make the move to the NFL. And I think, too, with him, you talk about his size. Guys that size, all, all football players, but guys that size especially, you can only take so many hits. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so for him, I, I do think it was probably in his best interest to do it now. Uh, he's been here four years to make that move. And think about this, too. Because there's always the risk he doesn't get drafted. There's always a risk something that it doesn't yeah. work out with an NFL team. I don't know if there's ever been a better time as a football player to play professional football Correct. because you have the USFL coming yeah. back for another year, yeah. the XFL relaunching yeah. again, yeah. the CFL yeah. obviously that you know well. So there are more options available right. to put some things on tape correct. and to have another yeah. avenue to get to the league. Yeah, correct. And I think like so what you said right there, it's it's – the simple fact that you look at guys like, why would you stay another year? Because I can develop to put myself in a better position. Yeah. Demario Douglas at the college level right now is not, you're going to come back and have another great year, yeah, right? right? You're not going to develop any more to put yourself in a better position. And once again, like you said, he made here four years, mm -hmm. right? It's it's the best time. Much as we love to have him back, right. it's the best time for him for him to move on. All right, so the Shrine Bowl, Thursday night, 8.30 on NFL Network. Check that out. Darrell Johnson actually played this past Saturday in the NFL PA Bowl. Did play, didn't, didn't collect a stat, so he's another guy. That's trying to uh, turn some heads there and, and we help look his at draft combine stock. invites. Have those gone out yet? I don't think. No, they. No, I don't, not that I know of. So yeah, that'll be yeah. interesting to see. Because that's there's yeah. some guys at Liberty like, you know, Darrell Johnson. Will he get a you know a combine? Yeah. And Demario Douglas obviously yeah. get a combine invite. You know, and then I start looking at some of these other guys that just love to play. Yeah. Like, will does Scruggs want to try to continue yeah. to play in a USFL, XFL, or even try to get into an NFL camp or CFL, yeah. whatever it may be? Um, you know, guys like that. So there's some, there's some guys. I actually saw a tweet from somebody. It was some type of uh, other kind of combine thing for kind of like guys that didn't yeah. get invited, and they were talking about how good Scruggs yeah. was. So he's another guy that, yeah, I and mean, we know he's going to put in the work. Yeah. You know he's going to get everything out of his ability. It'll be interesting Scruggs to see. Scruggs is the kind of guy that's going to – if he still really wants to play and he yeah. loves to play, he's going to show up somewhere. Yeah. 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 He's good. I'm a huge fan of Scruggs. All right. Before we get – we're going to get to the mailbag here in just a little bit. And mailbag! That's become the favorite part yeah. of the mailbag is that right there. <laughs> so we'll get to that in just a little bit. We've got some great questions uh, this week as well. But before we dive into the mailbag, and we appreciate you sending all those questions our way, but if you also – Want to reach out to someone that can help you oh, get a home loan, can help you. You're looking for a house. You want to get pre-approved. Yeah. Joe Yock is that guy, Alcova Mortgage. You know, you sit there at sometimes you said, I was saying about this morning, man. Yeah. And so sometimes you sit there and you think to yourself, you know, am I powered by Alcova Mortgage? Uh, yeah, right? I mean, you, you may lay you lay your head down at night right, and you, some, to, you, you think you're stuck with your pillow. And you say, Am I powered? Am, yeah. 
am I part of the Yacht Talk circle of trust? Mm. Am I powered by Alcoba Mortgage? Yeah. I ask this question. Some say yes. Yeah. And you know what those people do? They sleep well. That's they sleep true. peacefully at night. Yeah. Some say no. I'm with another mortgage company. Yeah. And I ask, why? Why? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. And, and can't we change that? Yeah. Yeah. I, think I don't want to know a world where I'm not part of that circle. Thank of you. Thank you very much. And, and so, so we, we figure that out for you. Yeah. So, so if you are looking to purchase, you're looking to refinance, you just go on the Google machine. Sure. Keep it simple. Joe Yock, J-A-U-C-H. Boom. Take you to the link ski. They go a little, yeah. a little. Next That's thing it. you know, you fill it out. That's and it. bang, we're off and rolling. And then you wake up one day, you sleep well at night, you're in the circle of trust. I tell you, there's no better feeling Too than easy. waking up in the morning. You're making that coffee, Thank you. You and do you it. pull the mug out you of the it. cupboard, and you pour it in <laughs> to your Yacht Talk Alcoba Mortgage it mug. It warms the soul. It really does. Yes. They talk about chicken soup for the soul. Chicken no, Yacht Talk, talk soup mug for the, for for the, the soul. soul is, <laughs> we'll, we'll work on that. We'll uh, work we're on workshopping that. that. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, all right, quickly, I want to touch on women's basketball real fast because they have been playing incredible. They're dynamite. Five straight wins. Get this. Harry. They're, Green. Harry Green's stud. Their that last three wins, Joe, have all come against teams that were in first place or had a share of first place yeah. in the ASUN Conference. No, don't, don't mess the list. That's place. how you climb back yeah. into the race. Liberty now 7-2, and two, tied for second in the ASUN. Emma Hess had 28 on Saturday, seven threes. Get out and watch the girls play. Oh, yeah. They're home for two games this week, Thursday against Jackson State, Saturday against Kennesaw State. You got no excuses. Get out there, root on the Lady Flames. You know, I just had an idea, yeah. Matthew. The Lady Flames I'm a big fan of. And you know why I'm a big fan of Lady Flames? Why is that? Because my sister in law, Jeannie Stinnett, is a former oh, Lady and that. Flame uh, shooting guard. Is that right? She was on the first team that went to the NCAA tournament. Wow. Yeah, okay. back, this would have been 90 something, yeah. 96 yeah. maybe, yeah. somewhere around there. Yeah. And she hit five three pointers in the championship game. Wow. And they came from behind. They were underdogs. Came so I've always been a huge fan of Carrie Green. From way back. I've been from way back I mean, and, and a huge fan of, of, of the Lady Flames. So I was just saying something. Yeah. Carrie Green, I'm throwing this out to you right now. Okay. Okay. You bring home the conference championship, yeah. right? And we already did this with the Lady Flames softball team. That's true. We, we will have the Lady Flames out to the JPL Yacht Compound. Yes. And we will have a pickleball day. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll we'll put the barbecue on. We'll throw some ribs on yeah. there. And we'll play a little pickleball. And Lady Flames will have a great time. So bring home the championship. Yeah. And you'll be JPL, JPL guests for a day. Well, listen, if they weren't motivated before. Now you are. Now there's no yeah. excuse. Yeah. Now you, throw, you, you dangle you, that you dangle that carrot out there in Carrie front Green. of them. Yeah. Carrie Green, listen to me. They'll run through a brick wall <laughs> for you now. <laughs> Good. They're going to show this in their next film session. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Fired up. Show that on the video board, you know, before they introduce yeah. the lineups. Yeah. Just to get them all, get them all fired Talk up. Talk to IT about I'll that. I'll work they on that. that. Yeah, I'll work on that. All right. It's that time. Mailbag time. Uh, we introduced this last week. We, we ask you to send us an email, flamecentral at liberty.edu. Send us questions. It can be about sports, about Liberty athletics. Obviously, Joe played uh, professionally as well. It can also just be about life. During Joe's yeah. travels, I want life questions. He is he has gathered so much from yes. various cultures and peoples that he would yes. love to share with you. So feel free to ask questions book about wisdom anything and out there. It is, and really, I feel like we're being selfish, keeping it <laughs> just just for us. I want you you all to experience share what we get love. to experience share on love. a near daily basis. You know? We can't all get all the re Instagram reels that Joe sends, but in some ways, I feel like. This is an opportunity to pull back the curtain and let you <laughs> let you see what Joe Yak is all about. For good, for better or worse. For I don't know. Yeah, worse. right. Yeah. Who we'll knows? let the chips fall where they may. Who knows? Yeah. Let things happen. All right. First question. And I don't know the I don't know. You any do not of these know. We, yeah, we not, like to keep I'm not pre-read these right. questions. We like to keep these fresh, right? Yeah. So we don't yeah. we don't, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> first question. This comes to us from Jackson. By the way, I should mention again. Yeah. Remember Liberty Flames at, or Flames Central at liberty.edu. Yeah. Best question of the day. Yeah. Your choice gets what? A Yacht Talk coffee. Yacht Talk coffee. And you know what? I felt so bad about last week's because you already sent it out. Yeah, last week's yeah. it's already yeah, in the so mail. It's in the so, mail. Yeah, it's, it's, it's coming hot off the press. Yeah. But there is uh, another gentleman that had asked a question. Uh, he tied in the mortgage and the refis yeah, and yeah. Did it the other. And I picked the other guy. The other guy with the Mount Rushmore. Yeah, right. Which you know that was a good one. Yeah. Right. But I felt bad, so I sent him, sent both of them. You sent both of them. Yeah, they both got mine. Oh wow. 
Yeah, yeah. So what kind of guy I am. You're, that's why you're the people's champion. That's the people's champion. For, the people. for the people, people, with the people, of, of the, the people. people. That's right. It's Yacht Talk, it's baby. It's Yacht Talk. All right, give it to All me. Right. All right, first question from Jackson. Hey, guys. Action Jackson. Is there any chance the Liberty hockey team ever moves on from club status oh. to NCAA? Oh. Is that something the athletic department is looking to do? Great question. Yeah. I've heard this you, one. You can answer this question. I've heard this one brought up a number of times. Yeah. And I actually was searching – I remember a couple of years ago, Damian Sorlet, our guy Dame, we know he listens. Yeah. Uh, with the news, uh, news, news in advance. News in the newspaper. Yeah. News in advance. Obviously, so love, obviously love. I'm a subscriber. <laughs> um, love Dame. Yeah, right. Uh, he did a question and answer with with Ian McCall and asked him this, and I searched for it on the Google Couldn't machine. Find it. Could not find it. Yeah. But I know number one, you've got the whole scholarship thing, right? Yeah. So if you add that, you'd probably have to. It's a bring problem up the that, women's team as it's well. It's a problem that JPL doesn't have. Right. <laughs> and that's Title IX yes, issues. Right. See, there's a Title yeah. IX issue. But one of the other things is geography. When you yeah. think about, like, who See, Liberty would why, play, right? This is why he's so smart. You look, the closest teams are probably up in the Pennsylvania area, like yeah. Penn State. Um, and then you do have, like, Alabama Huntsville. Bizarre. Didn't realize they're an NCAA hockey team, Get out apparently. Of here. Apparently they are. I had no yeah. idea. Uh, so they don't apparently care about the geography. They're all by themselves. But so that is one one hang up as well. The geography where we are located is is tough. I'll say this though, if they ever decide to make that move, the infrastructure is all in place. 100%. Like it's not like where you're like, oh boy, well we're gonna have to start from scratch. Like you have Killer Arena. Yep. You have you know Kirk Handy has run that program forever and done a great job. Yep. You have everything you need. The recruiting ties, the types of kids they're bringing in, like they probably could. Oh yeah, they could probably could. And they're going to the Great White North, eh? Yeah, that's right. They, they get the players, and you can get some players up in the Great White North. That's right. And a? we've seen a, and we've seen some teams that Jose. have done this. Arizona State did this a few years ago. Went from ACHA, the Liberty's in, the NCAA. Uh, Arizona State has Arizona it? State now. Yeah, they're 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 in because all them team. Canadians moved to Arizona. It's pretty nice the, out there. Yeah, pretty nice yeah. out there. Uh, so it can be done. It doesn't seem to be a high uh, high on the priority list right now. Uh, I wish we would have had this question last week. We could ask yeah. Ian himself to give us a little update on that. But uh, I will say this as well. One other thing: the relationship between the club sports side and the athletic side. I don't know if it's ever been better than it's it good. is right now. And so that's that's really that's yeah. really cool to see those two work together. Um, and that and that's been really cool. I think good for both. Could you win? Yeah. I mean, we're talking about Division One right. NCAA hockey, Frozen and four. so yeah, I'm talking about like yeah. I watched University of North Dakota play. Yeah, when I was growing up with Form, hockey. Formerly the Fighting Sioux. Yeah, my brother's a graduate of the Fighting Sioux. Is that right? Yes, I he is. Play football there, so yeah. I mean, I know North Dakota Grand Forks. hockey. Grand Forks. Yeah. I've been there many times. Yeah, watch the Fighting Sioux yeah. play hockey, and uh, we're not allowed to call them. No, what are they? I don't even know okay. what they are now. Yeah. I don't know. No. But you know, like, I guess the better question was like, man. That is a tough sport to be competitive in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. maybe the question would be how long would it take to How long would it take yeah. to get competitive at that level? But you're starting from a pretty good spot if you ever decided to do oh, 100%. it. Oh, 100%. And the, you know what? The other thing, too, it's huge, is the Liberty fans love it. Love it. Like this support. Yeah. You bring kids on a recruiting trip here? Yeah. Love it. Small arena, boom, packed in there, yeah. place going crazy. Yeah. Hockey fights happening all yeah. over the place. Gloves getting thrown. Face washing going yeah. on. The whole yeah. deal. It's the great. Whole deal. The whole deal. I love it. It's great. All right, next question. What is the most memorable? This comes from our buddy Paul. Paul, we talked to him a lot of times before basketball okay, games. Okay, Paul. What is the most memorable Liberty and non-Liberty game you have ever attended in person, whether working or spectating? Wow. You've been to some games, Joe. Oh, I've been to a lot You've of games. You've been to some games. I've been to a lot of games. You know, personally, personally. the one that I just mentioned, the Lady Flames winning the, okay. the, the conference championship. Yeah. I mean, it was just that's a, it not was, where I. Expect, it was a great yeah, family expected, moment, yeah. and they were down, and they came back, and the yeah. crowd was going crazy, and I looked over, and it, uh, Mama was crying. Yeah. It was great. So that that was it. That was a great one. As a when I coached here, yeah, okay, for Liberty when I coached here, the year it would have been 1997 when we went nine and two, and went to App Appalachian State. Yeah. We went to Appalachian State. They were ranked 10th in the country, and we were sitting at 8-2, and two, and we beat them. Yeah. We beat them. You guys got robbed that year, didn't we you? We got robbed. We beat them. We thought, okay, if we beat the 10th team yeah. in the country and we go 9-2, we go and two, yeah. we're going to the uh, Division I AA playoffs. Yeah. And they kept us out. Unbelievable. But that that was a th – those were two unbelievable – and obviously there's yeah. been a ton since then, but those, those are two, for me personally, yeah. that popped to mind. Okay. For me, my – 
not Liberty one that I, I, I've been to and, and worked was 2011 World Series, Cardinals, Rangers, game six. It was the Rangers looking to close it out, win the World Series in St. Louis. They were up like seven to four in the eighth inning. And David Freeze hit like a two RBI triple in the bottom of the ninth to tie it and then hit a walk-off home run. I remember being out. Unfortunately, the unfortunate part of this is, number one, I hate the Cardinals. So that was unfortunate. <laughs> but the second part was I'm out in the parking lot doing a live oh, hit. Oh, you're working this. I'm working this. Oh, okay. I was working, working local news. Yeah. I'm in the parking lot doing a live hit, and you just hear the stadium erupt. And it's like, oh. what, what's going on? Yeah. And so then you end up I running back in. And you, I think I got in just in time on a little monitor in like the entryway, saw freeze, hit the walk-off home run. That sent it to a game seven that the Cardinals ended up winning. Yeah. I will say the coolest experience that I got out of that, despite wanting the Rangers to win, was when St. Louis won, being in the locker room. Like I remember being from me to you, from Albert Pujols, spraying me with champagne oh, how as I have the that? camera up here shooting that everything how happened in the locker room. How great is that? that? That's something that you'll ne- you, know, you never oh, forget. That's awesome. So that was pretty cool, despite it being the Cardinals. Uh, for Liberty, yeah. I would say it's a couple of things. The just spectating, being at that NCAA tournament game, Caleb yeah. Holmesley beating Mississippi State, yeah. uh, sitting there courtside. I wasn't broadcasting, but just sitting there watching. That was unbelievable. Yeah. You just felt like the Liberty crowd right behind me. You just felt like something special was happening. That was great. In terms of actually broadcasting, like basketball-wise, Naz and I were actually talking about this uh, Saturday. The end of last season, there was a stretch where Liberty played Stetson and Darius scored 39. Then they played FGCU in overtime game. Liberty lost. Darius scored 28. And then the next game was another overtime game on senior day against Kennesaw, and Darius scored 47. That stretch of games might be the most intense stretch of of basketball games that that I've ever called. So that that was pretty special. For football, what's been, you think, for us calling one? What's been the best? For us calling one. That Troy game was pretty big at the time. You remember that? Yes, I do remember that. That. you know, it was cool to be at last year. We didn't get the actual call. We did the pregame. It was the BYU game. Yeah, for sure. Just because the atmosphere and then yeah. how, how you know, dominant. Like, it started out like, oh, boy, this is going to yeah. go a little sideways. Yeah. yeah. And then the way they came back and completely dominate was, yeah. was I would say, that BYU yeah. game at home with that. Yeah. That was, like, the culmination of a lot of things falling into place for Liberty sports and yeah. Liberty football, especially in general. I feel like a lot of the, the Liberty games we've done haven't been all that close. You know yeah, what I mean? Because like, Liberty's been so good at home. Yeah. So not, nothing wrong with that. Now, but... let me give you my 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 non. Oh, yeah. Give, yeah what do we got? I'm going to go with two games. Okay. Okay. Two games. You know, I'm a Tar Heel guy. Right. So the Gio, Giovanni Bernard punt return against NC State. Okay. We hadn't beaten NC State in five years. Yeah. Scores tied. It's the end of the game. We think we're going to overtime. And he takes one to the crib. <laughs> he cribs a punt return like yeah. 80 yards. Uh, Jones Angel, the, the play-by-play guy, that was like his moment where yeah. he was – Finally explained this to me one time. I, he's finally fully accepted by the no, he didn't. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I kind of deal with that that he accepted by the the Carolina crowd, and uh, so that was unbelievable. Yeah. I was at that game. Yeah, it, with my buddy. Shirt came off. I, yeah, I it was figured. it was yeah. completely out of control. Yeah. Um, and then what, what else is really cool? You'll like this one, Matt. Since you had your World Series yeah. story, yeah. is I went to the Super Bowl. Really? And when uh, I mean these guys are the prime. Yeah. So we had Jerry Rice. Uh, oh, Steve it Young, 49ers Chargers. Yeah, Steve Young, wow. Deion Sanders against 49ers the 49ers put it on Stan Humphreys and yeah. the Chargers. So here's what's really cool. Yeah. So my brother was a scout for the yeah. Chargers, right? Yeah. And and we were we were and Bobby Beth was a GM and we were super tight with Bobby and and whatnot. So I'd finished my yeah. first season in the CFL. I think it was after my first year. Yeah, it was. And uh went to San Diego. Yeah. And I stayed there for like a month. Wow. Okay, that's because all my life. buddies, yeah. like I had Natron Means, yeah. a tailback, yeah. oh, played yeah. at Carolina with him. My college roommate, Deans May, played tight end for them. We had another guy, linebacker named Reggie Clark, all and my brother. So all yeah. everybody just happened yeah. to be in San Diego. So I stayed out there for like a month, and Bobby Bethard yeah. gave me sideline passes. So wow. I was watching. I watched him play the Raiders in the L.A. Coliseum yeah. from the sidelines. Yeah. I watched him play the Colts in the playoffs from the sidelines. That, that was Jim Harbaugh Colts. Jim believe, Harbaugh, wasn't it? Jim yeah. Harbaugh Colts. Yeah. And then I watched, uh, and then I didn't get to go on signs for this one, but I saw him play Pittsburgh, Neil O'Donnell, oh, yeah. Pittsburgh, yeah. A, in Three River Stadium, yeah. and yeah. they beat Pittsburgh. They were expected to get killed. Yeah. Right. So what's San Diego going to do in Pittsburgh yeah, in, right. in January? Yeah. Right. And and Stan Humphreys yep. leads the Chargers. And then two weeks later, 
um, at the Super Bowl. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's a good little run. It, it, was, it was an unbelievable run, and they, they got killed. Yeah. Yeah, but, but I mean, there was not stopping. That was the old that's, monkey off the back of yes, Steve Young with yeah, the you shot know the, and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah I was yeah, a they, young little kid watching yeah. that game. It, that yeah. was that was a yeah. great time. And you know who played um, the pregame show? Who's that? Hank Williams Jr. Is that right? <laughs> all his rowdy friends were there. All probably. my rowdy yeah. friends are yeah. coming over tonight. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Okay, yeah, that's great. couple more questions. <laughs> You're gonna like this one. I give it to you. This is from Scott. During the podcast, Matt Warner seems like a cool guy. Yeah. However, oh. On Twitter, oh. he seems to be an elitist jerk. Oh. Which persona is the real Matt Warner? And then he ends the message saying, Joe is the man. So, Joe, I oh. feel like you're as qualified you. as anyone yes. to answer this yes. question. Yeah. Uh, thank goodness Emily's not <laughs> here this week. You know, you that, haven't that asked that. That could have been. That you haven't been. asked that when Emily's Should not I? here. Okay, yeah. maybe we'll, we'll, no, no, no. Uh, you did a good yeah. job. Oh, yeah, that. no. I ask that yeah. while Emily's not here. Yeah. That yeah. is a really good question. Yeah. That's a really good question. Let me tell you something about Matt Warner. <laughs> Okay. I mean, fair question. It's a fair question. Fair question. Right? Yeah. Matt Warner is, he's my pal, That's right. right? And we have a great time together. Yeah. And he, he, what you see from Matt Warner is what you get. There is nothing mm. different with him on camera than he is off camera. So that, that, that's the, that's the deal. Now, yes, sure. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, now, I'm going to take yeah, this okay, in a okay. direction. All right, all right. And I think you're going to agree with this, okay, right? right? I'm going to say Matt Warner, he's from Missouri. That's right. He's a show me state. Show me. He's a show me state kind yeah, of guy. Yep. Right? And so he calls it like it is. I think he may come across a little <laughs> bit on Twitter every once in a while. <laughs> right? As, you know, I know what I'm talking about. Mm. And the rest of you guys can go stick your head in the sand. Yeah. Okay? And is that true somewhat? I could say that because you know where this really comes out? On the pickleball courts. Uh. You know, he's got some issues in life. <laughs> But don't we all? Yeah, right. You know, he who lives, if you live in a glass house. I've never claimed to be perfect, stones, Joe. I've right? never claimed yeah. to be perfect. Yeah, so yeah, sure, yeah. he's got some issues. And if you sure. if you watch him on the pickleball court, just if you want to let you behind the court, behind the curtain yeah. a little bit, yeah. right? He's got anger problems. Yeah, okay. Right? And so he has a tendency to throw his paddle. Sure. He he has a he has a tendency to get upset at himself. And and um, yeah, I've watched it wing across my face being his partner. But yeah. you know what you have to do with a guy like Mamar? And this Duck. is the best advice. This is the best. Best advice to all those people out there thinking he's elitist on Twitter, Twitter, you just love him for who he is. Oh, wow. Appreciate that, Joe. Right? These yeah. are the words of wisdom he yeah. talked about. Yeah. We love him, you accept, and you just embrace, embrace it. Embrace it. And when did our partnership become a lot better on the pickleball court? When I stopped encouraging you. Right. Don't I encourage him. I told him, don't, don't bring that positivity, that don't positive that garbage <laughs> in here. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear, hey, it's all right. We're going to do, no, don't tell me that. Yeah, we let do. me live in my rage. <laughs> let you live in your rage and yeah. you embrace the rage. Right. Embrace the hate. Yeah. And usually. Things, and I, things work out Usually better. you come out the other side of it okay. And you come out More okay. More often than not. We, we, you know what? After it's all over, yeah. we sit down, we have a cream soda, and That's and, right. and everything's fine. That's next absolutely day. right. All right, good. Thank you for that, Joe, I think. <laughs> uh, finally, last question. I think. In our mailbag. Yeah, remember, Liberty Flames at, I keep messing it up, Flames Central, Central at, yeah. Liberty's di, at liberty.edu. Yeah. Send us your questions. Last question. Hola. I love oh, the show. Hola. Curious. I'm looking to buy a new home in Costa Rica. Do oh. Joe's services reach to Central America? This is from Emily A. Emily, oh. <laughs> Emily A. Costa Rica. Looking to buy a new home. I'm not taking that bait. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, looks this huh. is She's just rubbing it huh. in. Yeah. Emily, yeah. That, it's she, cold and rainy here. This one came to us. Uh, cold and rainy Middle here. of last week. Yeah. It's, I think it's in the 80s down there where she is. But, yeah. Tough life. All right. There you go. Mailbag. Hey. We didn't even comment about the green. You are looking good in the green, too. Our look. YouTube audience appreciates that. Yeah. That's yeah. for the YouTube. That's thing. the reason you watch on YouTube. It's yeah, just you, to see I mean, what Joe's going to wear. I think I'm going to stick with the green. Yeah. Jacket. Joe had that yeah. one week where it really hit rock bottom with the giveaway T-shirt, but he has rebounded nicely. But that's part of the elitist thing that guy's talking about. <laughs> you know, that's there. You go. Yeah, that's it right there. No, so you right. you got it. You got to take a jab, don't you? That's fair. Huh? You yeah, just fair. can't just can't let it yeah. go. Guy. Yeah. Okay. Hey, before we go, I do want to touch on a serious note. Uh, first time we've talked since the unfortunate passing of Jesse Lemonier, yeah. and I know we've we both uh, a lot of people. There's been out, an outpouring on social media about him, but. You and I, I wouldn't say that we were close with him by any means, but you spend enough time around sure. a team and get to know a personality like him, which was was a huge personality yeah. and such a joyous person. And uh, obviously, just want to remind folks and remind myself 
Uh, keep his family in your prayers. Uh, I know the reports have come out since then that, that his girlfriend has a child on the way. Keep his his, his unborn baby in your prayers. Uh, but but it's just obviously a really tough situation and a, a kid that we're going to miss. I know we had even been, Emily had been talking with him yeah. a week and a half ago. We were going to catch up with him. He was going to be playing in the USFL. And so it's really tragic. And uh, a lot of great memories, obviously, from his Yeah, I mean, just, I mean, just, you know, there's, there's certain guys yeah. that you're around and you interview and you see and that just have a great personality. Yeah. And Jesse was that, that guy. And, that, and that's the one thing I always remember him by. He yeah. just had such a big smile. Yeah. You know, he's such a, he's a little bit quirky, yeah, right? For right, sure. for sure, a little quirky, yeah. but he, he was a, a really good football player, but he just seemed like such a better person. Yeah. And the one thing I always remember was that big smile. Yeah, and I remember you trying to teach him sack dances. I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I, we we sat there after practice yeah. one day, and um, we we had a we he was he got in trouble. Yeah, right. Because he sack dance. I said, "Don't worry about that, Jesse. Yeah. We're gonna yeah. do sack dance." I think didn't he do like a guitar? Yeah, he did or a something. guitar, yeah. and it came over. And the coach was yeah. on him, and he said, "Well, I gotta be careful." I said, "Don't worry about it, Jesse. Yeah. You keep getting sacks. You're, you're gonna be perfectly right. fine." And <laughs> we, we were we were teaching some sack dances. Yeah. We were doing we were doing yeah. the Humpty Hump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, it was it was good. Yeah, I, I also always remember you talking about him be a little quirky. He's the only guy that I've ever heard do like five minutes at a press conference about how good peanut butter toast and hot chocolate are and he yeah. went on a rant about yeah. that and it's just he was such a, a joy to be around him again keep his family in your prayers yeah. just a real uh, sad situation and and uh but one of the all-time greats certainly Amen. uh at liberty so joe appreciate it as always we'll see if uh, emily joins us again next week or if she's purchased uh, a property somewhere Maybe. in central yeah. america somewhere yeah. who knows who knows who knows uh, but stick with us to find out we appreciate it you've been watching the flame central podcast powered by Alcova Mortgage, baby. Hey.